Oh, it's 2020. So, you decided to start with YouTube in 2020 and now, after receiving your Christmas money, you are browsing through the different windows of the online store of your choice and uh, you simply cannot decide what camera to buy with your money. Whoa, this one can shoot 4K, it has a folding screen and it looks great too! And it costs 1,700 euros. This one can also shoot 4K, but it does not have a folding screen, but, but it does have super fast autofocus and it costs 1,500 euros. You see, buying cameras can not only be very confusing, it can also be a super expensive investment, especially when you are just starting out. But does it have to be the most expensive camera with all sorts of features at the beginning of your YouTube career? If you are interested, I have an alternative for you here that is technically the best budget camera that you can currently get on the market, even though it has been there for five years now. If you want to see more videos and want to support my channel, just click on the subscribe button right here. This would be highly appreciated. As the name suggests, the Sony Alpha 6000 is the first APS-C camera that Sony launched in their precious Alpha series almost five years ago. You mostly see it as a kit, uh, which includes the body itself and the lens, and in my case it's the 16-55 OSS lens. And I have to say, I am very impressed with the quality that you can get out of this kit. I think it looks damn good even though most of it was shot handheld with the kit lens. But I also have to admit that in contrast to the newer models such as the 6.4 or 6.5, the old 6.0 naturally does not have every new feature such as shooting in S-Log. But if you, for example, record stuff in your home studio where you can control your lights and everything else, then you really don't need an S-Log if you nail the exposure correctly. What? Who? I can hear some distant questions from the audience like Leech, what the hell is S-Log? Here you go. S-Log is the flat image profile of Sony cameras which can be color graded much easier since this profile generates a lot more details and does not squeeze everything into a predetermined grid like normal flat profile codecs do. It rather assigns the individual stops to the same width for every stop. I know, I know, a bit much technical blah blah to start with. And that is exactly why it is not really relevant if you want to buy a budget camera as a beginner. If you still want to record in a flat, nearly S-Log setting, I have listed my settings and a few other tricks for you at the end of the video that will make your life easier as a beginner. If you take a look at the different Sony Alpha cameras, you will quickly find that the price of the next best Alpha camera, in this case the 6.4 with the kit lens, costs nearly twice as much and the 6.6 about three times as much. This means for the money you could have saved, you can actually buy a few other things that you would need anyway, like a monitor, a budget LED light, a microphone and so on. I think that is not a bad deal. What I particularly like about the camera is the beautiful form factor. It's small, it lies very well in the hand and the build quality is more than sufficient for the price. It feels a bit plasticky, but after the camera fell twice onto my wooden floor because of my own stupidity, I could just put it back together and have no further problems with it. It is sturdy enough for my taste. I've heard from many other YouTubers that the NP FW50 batteries are too small and do not have enough power. I don't find that to be a big problem on a regular shooting day for YouTube content in itself. I have five pieces of batteries in use, they last for about a day of shooting and changing them is done 
in quite a few seconds, so there are no delays in your actual schedule. A disadvantage of the Alpha 6, in contrast to its younger siblings, is that there is no IBIS or in-body image stabilization that has been built into the body itself. However, this disadvantage is eliminated by the kit lens, which has optical uh, steady shot or OSS for short. And in my opinion, the lens does a very good job of keeping the image steady when actually used handheld. On the sensor side, as in the entire Alpha 6 series, Sony installed a 24 megapixel sensor. This means that you can take sufficiently large and sharp photos for your thumbnails or Instagrams without having to worry about a lack of, well, quality. And now let's have a look at the video side of the camera. I am pretty sure that's why you are actually here as, well, your main reason. Of course, you have to make compromises when you compare it with the newer Alpha models. But as mentioned before, and especially at the beginning, we are talking about a budget camera that only costs half as much as the newer ones. Yes, the camera is not able to record in 4K, but in my opinion, this is still not necessary in 2020, especially not for YouTube content. With Full HD, you can still produce a good enough clarity, which is sufficient enough for most smartphone viewers out there. And if you want to get all the 4K elitists, here's a little trick. A lot of YouTubers record in Full HD, then place their video file into a 4K timeline in the editing program and then upload a 4K version to YouTube. It uh, looks quite good, I have to say. So what I am actually trying to say is, you are sufficiently supplied with 1080p in 60 frames per second. Slow motion looks buttery soft and sometimes I even have the feeling that the Full HD looks a bit sharper than on the successor models of the Alpha series, especially as on the 6.3. And if you are wondering, what about the autofocus of the camera? I don't know much about manual focusing or I want to be always sharp without worrying about details. Well, uh, I can tell you, yep, the autofocus actually does the job quite well. Of course, <laughs> you cannot compare it with the super snappy hyper autofocus of the newer models, which can scan up to 3 million pixels more and has an ultra eye autofocus technology even for small insects. But, and I think we have to make that <laughs> clear again once more, we are talking about a significant price difference between those models. Personally, I am absolutely satisfied with the speed and the precision of the autofocus. It does its job really well. Now, uh, let's get to a real disadvantage of the camera. The Alpha 6 is the only camera in the Alpha series without a microphone connection. So if you are looking for a flow camera, then I either advise you to upgrade to a higher model or you spend the money you have saved with buying this camera towards a microphone that has actually been produced directly by Sony for the hot shoe mount. I made a video about that last year, which you can watch right here. The kit lens itself has a good focal range of 16 to 55 and an aperture of 3.5. If you zoom with it, the aperture closes uh, down to 6.5. If you are dissatisfied with this, you should reinvest some of the saved money into a good Sony lens, which has a continuous aperture of around 4 or better. For example, the Sony 15mm f1.8 for just under 300 euros or the Zeiss 16 to 70mm f4, which you can use to increase your exposure, which looks far better in comparison. For the price of around 400 euros for the body and the kit lens, I think the Alpha 6 is still, still the best entry level camera currently available on the market. Of course, unlike other cameras, it has fewer features and technical gadgets, but as a whole, it has everything you need to get started with YouTube. Full HD, 60 frames per second, it's very portable and handy, has a good enough autofocus and produces clear and really sharp images. I would actually be interested in what you think of the camera and whether you would still buy it as your main camera in 2020, or do you might think 2020 is the year of 4K finally? 
if you already have an Alpha 6 yourself and would like to tell your story about it, then please go down in the comments. I'm always interested in what my community actually thinks about that. And now, as promised, here are a few tips and settings that I have learned while using the Alpha 6 over the years. Here are my neutral s logish color settings if you want to actually get a great picture profile. If you cannot get 60 frames per second while recording slow-mo, you are probably recording in PAL, so let's actually change it to NTSC, this is 60 frames. If you want to capture footage in XAVSC 50 Mbit per second, you buy yourself a memory card that has at least 65 gigabytes. I personally use the 120 gigabyte models. If you wish to vlog, but I don't have a monitor, get the Sony Imaging Edge mobile app. You can actually mirror yourself with it onto your smartphone. And if you are in need of some great looking time lapses for your videos, spend the $10 on the Sony store and get the time lapse app for the Alpha 6. It is definitely absolutely worth the money. And as a last tip, also consider investing some money in into a cage for your camera. This helps with not only protecting it when you as I do, drop it, but also gives you a lot of uh, points to screw more gear onto your camera like lights or a phone holder. So thank you very much for watching. My name was Leech as always and I hope to see you again in the next video. Until then, goodbye.